This is Dr. S. P. Arsa from Mechanical and Industrial Engineering Department, IIT Roorkee. In the course of vibration control, we are mainly discussing about the principles of active vibration control, and in that you see uh, the uh, the uh, uh, further category is the piezoelectric part. So we discussed about that what exactly the piezoelectric materials are, in which you see the integrated uh, feature means using the like we can say that it can be act as a sensor, it can be act as an actuator and the material itself has this potential to even the part of these even in the in the sensing or uh, like the sensing of the acceleration or any part is here can be immediately just out. So, in the last lecture we mainly discuss about the application of these piezoelectric materials right from even the generation of high voltage or the power source to the sensor or the actuators or in for, for many other applications where there is a direct coupling of these piezoelectric materials are being suitable or we can say they are more compatible to that. And even we discussed about the piezoelectric accelerometers and there are lots of you seen like we can say the uh, properties are there through which we can say that they are more compatible the shear mode system in the uh, piezoelectric accelerometer is one of the most significant for measurement of the vibration at the sensitive level, the high sensitivity level, high sensitivity level and also when even the environment is of more severe from the acoustical way or from you see here the humidity way or from even the temperature transient features. So, we, we discussed all three types whether we are just talking about the shear or whether we are talking about the flexural or the compression mode of this accelerometer under the piezoelectric material category. And then even we discussed about that how we can use these piezoelectric accelerometers right from their application point of view means what is the criteria and what kind of you see the property which we can look while we are choosing the piezoelectric accelerometers. So, now even you see in this chapter we are further you see you know like categorizing the various other properties of these piezoelectric accelerometers based on this based on these piezoelectric actions of the material under active vibration control. So, as we know that this active vibration control is nothing but you see it is absolutely based on the technique in which the vibration of a structure is reduced or controlled by applying a counter force to the structure that is appropriately out of phased, but in equal in magnitude to the original vibration. So, ultimately you see we need to just put up two opposite force which are cancelling each other and struct the structure is just stopping uh, through the vibrate uh, through this you know like the oscillation or vibrating features. So, we can say that that how we can sense this force and how we can produce this through the actuations the you know like the negative force that is basically coming under the smart structure technology or we can say some intelligent technology through which we can create the structure that embody sensors and actuator which functions like the nerves and the muscles of the human. Because we know that both are just based on the sensing feature and the actuator actuating feature from the muscles itself in a human body. So, there are many cases in which the vibration can be straightway controlled using this concept. So, we are saying that the smart structure which is a human body is a smart structure straight away when any sensing feature is coming immediately the actuation part is there and we can simply find out that you know like the action which is to be required there itself. And that is there in the in the you know like a almost you see 100 1 thousandths of the micron seconds. So, when we are talking about the smart structure they have been actively studied not only in you know like uh, these uh, uh, the static or the, the, these you know like the simple machines where it is there in the production floor from the power sector to even the aeronautics and the space field where one of the constraint feature is the weight and the space. So, the solid actuators can be used in these fields generally produced only a small disp displacement, but when the force is very high. And by incorporating these actuators in the main structure, the way the variety of applications just like you see like we can say the uh, the, the passive the facilities the for facility the facilities the building transportation 
can also be you know like uh, an integral part with these incorporation of the actuator with the structure. And the same, same time the direct piezo effect which allows to use the piezoelectric materials as the sensor can also one of the specific part of this piezoelectric feature. And we know that you know, like because of this availability and uh, there are a wide range of applications and you see the sensitivity part nowadays for vibration control these piezoelectric features are being on the topmost. And the converse piezoelectric effect may be readily available and utilized in the uh, active vibration control as the source of this actuation force. So we can say that that can be immediately applied to various buildings or the transportation that is being used for that and these piezoelectric materials are typically we can say the uh, ceramic which we discussed or the crystalline in, in the structure with permanently aligned with the electric dipoles. And then through that you see here both the actions can be carried out together. But if the crystal is stressed then the crystal symmetry is broken and the internal electric field is generated between the surfaces of piezo. And if the internal field is not compensated, say for example the, the uh, like the sorting one side of piezo to other, it result an induced voltage. And the effect of these you know like we can say stressed, uh, the, the effect of this stressing a, a piezo to generate the voltage is sometime we are saying that this is the direct piezo effect. And the converse piezo effect involves inducing a stress in the piezo element by applying an external electric field or we can say the potential part in that. So piezoelectric we can say actuators are roughly classified into the uniform type means you know like we have the unimorph in which you see you know, like the things are being different and we have the laminated type. And both the type slightly we can say you know, like the distort or expand when the voltage is being applied to the system. Although light and compact they can generate a very strong reactive force and that is why they can be act as a actuator part. So we can say it is possible to introduce the active vibration control of a structure by integrating these actuators into the components without significantly changing the shape or the weight of the main structure. So we can say in the field of active vibration control the use of piezo sensing devices continuously, continuously to be popular in both part whether we just want to be act as a sensor or actuator right from the researcher point of view or practicing engineer point of view. Because we know that the study shows that active vibration control of the even flexible beams predominantly use the piezo ceramics as an actuator element and controlling this mechanical motion and dampen out the unwanted vibration in the flexible structure can be even achieved accurately and within the sensitive feature using this piezoelectric transducers. So piezoelectric materials are the crystal or ceramics through that you see here we are just generating the voltage when they are being under stressed. And when we are simply you know like mounting on the flexible structure, the vibration and the deformation of the structure are coupled to the attached the piezoelectric transducers and using the voltage induced in the piezo as an input signal, the stress may be monitored or controlled using this we can say external sunt or we can say the feedback circuit. So this is what you see one of the specific application point of view where we can directly couple this system together. So you can see that these are the various transducers which are being there and which are being straight way applied to these surfaces. So you can see this is what you see the first part which is simply like a, a thin based plate is there and then you see these are nothing but you know like uh, the piezo featured part is there which can be straightway coupled to the entire surface. So whatever the mechanical motions are being there, the deformation can be straightway sensed out. So either of that whether you see you know like you can see that they are all been manufactured by the companies of various dimensions. So that whatever the deformation of even microns level to macro level, 
the voltage of low level to high level can be immediately sensed out and can you know, like generate the whatever the required features are. So, wide selection of these transducers are just you know, like either we can say shape and size configurations can be straightway adopted and you see what the mounting features are there of the machine, they can be immedi immediately adopted. So, we can say in like uh, these transducers which I just shown previously in a pre-packaged form with necessary electrical leads which are being bounded on the surface are simply equipped with the protecting foil and the connection terminal. So, that you see you know, like a pro <coughs> whatever the uh, these uh, sensing features are there immediately sensed out maybe in terms of the strain or in terms of the voltage and immediately transmit to the we can say recorder or for analyzer. So, the longer trans uh, longer transducer pictured at the bottom which was marked by QP 45 N and the transducer on the right side which was marked by the QP 25 N contains two layers of piezo ceramics. And these layers can be used either with the same input signal to achieve the larger actuation force or one layer can be utilized as the actuator while other can be used as the sensor to achieve near perfect collocation part. So, this is the beauty of these things you see here that we have the two different layers. So, in that sense you see here the one layer can be acted as the sensing feature and other layer can simply you know like actuate the system at the same time. And to use the piezo as either a sensor or actuator for vibration control device, we need to see that it should be rigidly mounted to the vibration sensing part, so that there should not be any transmissional you know like we can say uh, error is there. On in, then, then you see here we need to check it out that whatever is the transmission through the metallic surfaces are there when the vibrating mass is there, it can be immediately sensed out in the sensitivity level and then you see here the proper correction through this actuation force through this actuator can be acted to the system for effective vibration control on these vibrating sensitive part. And we know that this assures that any stress or the strain in the static structure is rigidly coupled to the piezo and then proper electric field can be generated or else you see here it is rigidly coupled with this entire structure when the voltage uh, you know like generated fields are there. So, that properly mechanical strain can be generated in that. So, piezo used as the sensors are often light and flexible to provide the best transmission to mechanical vibration into piezo for detection of the accuracy of the exciting frequency or the amplitude towards that. So, piezo used as actuators are often denser, so that the stress induced in the piezo by applied voltage is large enough to the stress uh, to the stress structure as well. So, that means you see here we need to check it out that the piezo which are using as the sensor certainly often the flexible and the light part for the proper transmission and when the piezo used as the actuator often denser. So, that the proper we can say you know like uh, the, stru the stress to you know like provide it towards the entire structure. So, this is the beauty of the piezos that you see how we are how we are applying how you see the application are being featured out with the sensor and actuator part. So, when you are trying to control the vibration for single degree of freedom system we know that in the spring mass damper part in the single degree of freedom system there is a clear single degree of freedom say x of t is there in which the vibration amplitude is being featured out with the displacement part. And if you want to control this x of t because now since we have only one orientation where the vibration is being allowed the entire mass. Now, if you want to control this using piezoelectric sensor and actuator which I am going to show you the next uh, uh, you know like diagram. The simplest circuit is to be provided just to collocate the pair of sensor and actuator piezo elements and also with the entire control units. And this collocated means the two piezos are being placed at the position the same position on two different side on the flexible structure. So, that at one point we can sense and on other point 
that can be actuated, the, that can be you know, like uh, the force can be actuated from that part. And we are assuming that the two piezos, they are simply identical, meaning that they have the same internal capacitance. And if the, and if the structural flexes uh, are just you know, like the voltage inducing, then in the two piezos will be equal, but since we are just act, uh, acted these thing as a sensor and actuator, they should be 180 degree out of phase. And we can keep you see in a two opposite directions on the same part. So, after correctly resolving the transfer functions between the vibration structure and the voltage generated in the sensor, between the voltage measured by the sensor, then we can say that the similar voltage applied to the actuator. The feedback control can be established between the sensor output and the actuator to oppose the vibration, to cancel out the vibration excitations. And this simple model is easy to imagine implementing, however you see you know, like we can say that there are you know like because it is uh, when we are framing the system, when the entire actuation part is there and the sensing part is there and we can simply frame the feedback control to establish between the sensor output and you know, like we can say the actuator input part. Again you see here there are lots of we can say the practicing small errors are there in the transformation function and which can be even uh, you know like we can say stabilize or we can say destabilize the entire feedback system. So, we, we need to check it out that what exactly the error functions are being generated when such actions are being happened during that time. So, this is what you see the active vibration control technique for single degree of freedom system where you can say that this mass which is being oscillated and we have the displacement of this x of t as you can see here and this is what the force we can say the excitation force which is being there along with this part. So, when such things are happening, this is being effectively controlled mainly by the stiffness and the damping part here. So, this is my single degree of freedom system mass spring damper. And when these displacements are being there, the sensor is straightway coupled to the vibrating mass. So, that you see whatever the signals which are being coming, it can be immediately sensed out here. And then you see here it is being coming to the processor where we need to check it out that whether we are really you know like require the amplification or ampli amplification or not when we are simply you know, like uh, processing this entire signals. So, in this processing unit we have the amplifier, once it is being amplified then you see here it is absolutely in opposite part you see this is what my like the actuator thing we are simply uh, sending this to actuator and this actuated this entire thing is actuated this force. So, this force is being generated in the actuator and then you see here this you know like we can see this dynamic force which is being there again just uh, put the repulsive force to suppress the vibration. So, this you see you know like the displacement which is being there is just forcing this uh, in the lower direction and this actuation force is being there on the up, uh, this uh, we can say upward direction. So, you see you know like uh, the repulsive forces are being generated in equal and opposite manner to suppress or to balance the entire motion of the vibrating mass. Or else if we want to put the analogy of this, you see here we have uh, this part, you see this is what the control system, we have the entire plant or this we can say the system in which you see here this you know like uh, the vibrations which is being you know like the sensed out at x of t is simply said, uh, sending to my you know like this uh, entire unit, the processing and amplification unit and when it is being you know like there the f of t which is you know like uh, the forcing factor is being coming out through this ampli uh, this actuator part is being now sending back to you know like uh, with this uh, correction part and then you see here it is being you know like uh, sending to the entire plant to suppress the vibrations. So, we can even generate the equation of motion for this when mass spring damper is being excited we know that the three forces are being generated the inertia force the spring force means the restoring force and the damping force. So, this is what you see on one side we have all the summation of the linear summation of these forces which is being equal to the exciting force f of t and you see here whatever you know like uh, the uh, the forces which is, be, which is being there at that point when the excitations are being there at the actuator part. So, f t minus f e or else we can say that the force 
which is the exciting force minus the force which is being generated at the actuator. So, H d x t and if you are saying that this H d x t is the integration feature of C 0 d square plus C 1 d plus C 2 where the d is the differential operator, then we can now couple this actuator in such a way that we can control the vibrating mass in all the proportionate feature means with the differential operator second degree, with the single degree differential operator and without this. So, when we are now putting together, we have now the coupled equation along with the sensor and the actuator part. So, it is m plus c 0 d square x plus c plus c 1 which is being now you know like the added feature from the actuator into d of x k plus c 2 x of t equals to f of t. So, this is my you know like the control input parameter which can be chosen based on this h d. So, this is what my the design parameter which can be immediately find out that you know like uh, what exactly the sensing and actuator features are being added so that we can have a controlled entire unit. So, we can see that this is what the actual feature in which we have the structure and this X structure is being excited through you know like any exciting feature and vibrating mass it can be sensed out here immediately and because of you see these voltage differences in between that you see here like uh, whatever the sensor part is there, it can immediately sense these things and in the opposite exactly opposite direction which we can say that 180 degree uh, phased out the actuation is there. So, through that you see the actuations can be happened there itself. So, based on this concept an experiment can be performed using the piezoelectric materials as the sensor and actuator as we have seen in the previous diagram where a cantilever beam is designed with the material of aluminum for performing the active vibration control using the smart structure as that and this beam is used with the material density and its strength and whatever the dimension which we can you know like uh, be, uh, be, can be taken with the feasibility of that. And this beam can be clamped on the horizontal table with the proper mechanism to move the linear movement and the rotational movement as desired you see that. So, this is one you know like a part can be designed and there you see here we can put the sensor and actuator together. So, when we are designing this a patch can be added which can be used as a sensor and whatever the material which is being attached to the fixed end of the beam and is responsible for sensing whatever the stress being produced on the beam and you see whatever the voltage which is being generated proportionally according to the strain part. So, the current which is produced in that is you know like we can say the piezoelectric current and as it is you know like generated from the pressure applied to the body. So, material generally which we are using in all these ty uh, types of nowadays uh, all these types of vibration control devices and the sensing part is the PZT patches the lead zirconate titanium or even you see when we are using not the ceramic material if you want to use the polymer material then even we can use the polyvinyl dean fluoride you see here that means PVDF part and in this we can say that the PZT is used in our setup like uh, which we can even uh, put that and it can be used in like sometimes even uh, it can be made up of this the pervo pervoxite which is you know like nothing but the calcium titanium oxide mineral species which is composed of the calcium titanium with the chemical formula we can say CATIO3. So, I mean to say that any of these either because nowadays um, in most of the labs even, even in uh, our IIT Ruriki lab we have the setup in which you see we are using the PZT, PZT patches in actuation or even uh, the sensing part of the inflatable materials. So, for such kind of material also we can be immediate actuate or even when we have uh, you know like a rotor bearing system of a cantilever we can be immediately adopt either PZT or PVDF or even the PV kind of smart materials there itself. So, in this concept when there is a deflection in the structure, the main structure the host, host structure due to stress induced in the sensor patch the crystal present in the sensor realign them itself you see here and in the process development of that the piezoelectric current through this current it is very less, but you see but you know like even if we combine many crystal together we can generate enough, e enough amount of power just for the sensing and actuation features. So, when a certain amount of voltage is provided to the sensor 
it produces an opposite, opposite effect and acts like a actuator part. So, it is used to produce the mechanical stress in the host, host structure and this voltage which has come across you see from you know like the entire control system which gets you know like uh, just the input from the sensor and the proper actuation functions in the opposite direction can be acted by the same structure with the sense you know like the piezo sensing part and the actuation part. So, for, for proper actuation in the beam the actuator is located at the fixed end at the highest amount of stress which is being produced and then you see here sometimes of the bending moment is also maximum there. So, whatever the deformation which is being you know like uh, there at that point it can be immediately you know like sensed out with this. So, a sinusoidal wave which is generated can be used to generate the function whatever you know like we can say in a sinusoidal part or the square or triangle wave and the profile of wave from the generated which will induce a similar kind of vibration in the entire beam through the actuator part. So, you see whatever the type of inputs are there maybe it is in the you know like uh, the periodic feature the sinusoidal or if we have the square wave or even if we have a triangular wave according to the wave function the you know like uh, whatever the vibration which is being generated through this wave and the, in, in the piezoelectric part the similar waves are generated and that can be supplied back through this amplifier to the actuator and the corresponding force in terms of these waves can be immediately fed. An amplifier which receives these signals from the wave generator is even very weak and it even it is not uh, enough to drive the excitation the exciter. So, this generator is coupled with the amplifier which is what you see I told you that is a requirement and where the signals are being amplified and finally, you know like we fade to the exciter. So, whatever the data acquisition system which is being responsible for the encryption of the input output system the signal which we receive from the sensor is electrical signal and we need to check it out that directly we cannot feed it to the computer because we know that it is not compatible towards that. So, the system is used to connect the signal into acceptable form and then feed it to the computer and after the calculation the signal is again given to the data acquisition part in which you see you know like uh, all the conversions are there and then we can fed this entire part which is you know like in terms of the force is uh, you know like fed to the actuator part. So, when we are talking about this you know like the substrate that is nothing but the uh, aluminum beam which is fixed to one end and you see the other end is hanging freely a cantilever beam can be you know like uh, just we can say uh, uh, putting for the control of vibration and in this part you see an exciter which is being there you see you know like the system can be immediately coupled with this particular part. And the nature of vibration will straightway depending on how the input signals are being there through these function generators. Where you see you know like uh, the nature of waveform whether it is you see you know like the sinusoidal part or the sine or the triangular part have the similar kind of vibration and that can be straightway produced in the beam itself. And the wave generator is used to generate the desired waveform which can be either you see all this part which we discussed and even in that you see whatever the frequency ranges are there right from even 0.5 hertz which is being there in the motion sickness part in the human being to even uh, you know like the uh, 1000 kilohertz for any spindle vibrations and even high range of vibrations part. If the frequency is high but the amplitude of the wave form is very low to produce any notable vibration in the beam then amplifier is certainly required to amplify the signals. So, irrespective of whatever the frequencies are there we need to amplify the ampli uh, we need to amplify the amplitude of the vibration and the range of ampli amplification can be varied using the no provider at the amplifier and then we need to check it out that what exactly the PZD patch which is be which we are you know like putting as a sensor and actuator is really a required part. So, that you see even it should not you know like quantify entire things. So, that you see there is a clear damage to our PZD part and the vibration which is you know like uh, uh, produces through the deflection of beam even can be maximized at the free end and to measure this deflection we can use the scanning laser droplet vibrometer which gives a very accurate and even it can record the smallest deflection of the vibration which is being produced and even at the nano level when we just want to see 
the carbon nanotube based you know like uh, this cantilever or the simply supported beam or even the bridged part the laser droplet vibrometer is a perfect device to use that the uncontrolled and controlled vibration signature can be even get and we can see those things so this is what the structure which i am talking all about we have a simple aluminum based sub substrate the uh, structure and then you see here this cantilever beam which is fixed on one end and open uh, this uh, free on other end is simply unlike having the exciter and through which you see we, we know that the wave generator part is there the exciters are there we can generate either sinusoidal wave feature the triangular wave feature or even the square wave feature and whatever the wave features are there on that cantilever beam it is simply being you know like uh, provide the excitement in the entire beam and this excitement now is being coupled the entire system is being coupled with this you see here we have the two main part the piezo actuation system and piezo sensing system so on the lower part where when we apply the load here there is a clear you know like the deflection in the entire beam and this you know like the bending feature in that is clearly like uh, sensed using this uh, uh, collocated piezo sensor pair so this piezo sensing you see you can see that this clearly you know like here whenever you see the mechanical uh, this uh, pressure or any kind of force is being applied there it's a clear you see the voltage generation is there and when this voltage generation is there we know that even though it is very high frequency and the frequencies are being very high if the amplitude is low we need to adopt some kind of amplifications so you see here you know like the, ampli the after this piezo sensing feature we need to adopt the amplifier and then it is simply faded to the data equation system or the dif display unit and once you see you get you know like uh, the amplified part then you see it has to be fed back to this piezo actuation system which is exactly opposite this actuator is exactly opposite means 180 degree uh, the phased out to the sensor so you see here when it is faded to the actuator and equal in you know like whatever the opposite forces the reactive forces are being supplied so that through that we can simply control the beam excitations so this is what you see you know like uh, a controller is there and uh, you know like even in that we can provide the gain value and accordingly you see we can change the signal strength and we can simply you know like uh, correct our whatever the error is there in between the input of sensor and output of actuator sorry the output of sensor and input of actuator so this is the uncontrolled vibration you know like when we don't have the control unit entire if we just remove this part then we have the vibration signature you can see that we have the transient feature there itself and then you see here after that time you see it is just going to the steady state part but this is a clear vibration spectrum is there towards this part and when we are now adopting the control unit there itself then you can see clearly that initially though it, it has a transient feature but once you see the corrective measures are being there by the actuator the vibration is immediately you know like we can say suppressed so you see here though this is you see exponential decays are there with the oscillatory feature and you see the sinusoidal feature say if the sinusoidal waveform is there then you see you know, like immediately it will be damp dampened out at the quicker time and then you see we have a almost you see zero uh, this uh, vibration amplitudes are there in terms of even the displacement or acceleration uh, at the uh, our vibrating mass so this is one of the unique method when we are using the smart structures as the sensor and the controller and you see here for suppression of vibration they can be effectively used on this part so either when we are talking about this design which is there on your screen in which you see here we have a sensor and actuator which are being keeping exactly opposite to each other and the entire control unit is being putting together in such a way that when we are changing the gain value according to the uh, the, st the strength of this you know like the uh, signal or according to whatever the force excitation we can even achieve a, a smoother control on the vibration of this not only in these uh, like the cantilever beam of even this metallic form but even if we have the inflatable structure or any kind of structure which we are using in you know like uh, the space uh, the space part we of any any profile not only the straight one even we have a circular profile or elliptical profile or any kind of irregular surface profile these pzt patches can be acted as the sensing and actuator part and can be immediately you see with this control unit we can effectively control the vibration which is coming under the active vibration control part 
So you see this was this was you see one of the we can say effective control on this vibration and when we are talking about now the forced vibration then you can see that right from you see the controlled you know like this uh, uh, control controlling part when we have even you see the steady state vibration and the entire controlling is off that means we are sensing the vibration on the external excitation you see f minus f t which I shown in the equation. This is what you see the entire feature and this we have the huge amplitude of the vibration at that. But once the controller is on you can see the drastic change in the excitation vibration amplitude and because of this we can say that this is a clear effective part of the actuator which is simply you know, like actuated the force for suppression of this you know like whatever the vibration which is being there at the exciting uh, force at F and whatever the F t is coming. So, F minus F t the cancellation part is very effective and that can be shown here in the measurement of this vibrations. So, this is the beauty of this system in which you see we are saying that you can clearly see that when the control unit is not working means the sensing amplification and actuation you see the vibration even at the steady state form they are clearly you see at that and when this is working there is a clear drastic reduction in the vibration when the entire unit is being on. So, in this lecture we mainly discussed about that you see how the vibration can be suppressed out with the using of the PZT patches or PVDF means the ceramic based material or the polymer based material or even you see here we can use the PV as you see you know like uh, the uh, this uh, as a sensing feature and the actuate, uh, actuating feature. We also conducted you know like this uh, experiment in which it was very clear that when we have a cantilever beam and what, what, what is the potential location where we can adopt the sensor and we can apply the actuator and the entire control unit with the gain value and or other you know like uh, the uh, sig signal generator we can even rather control effectively the uh, we can say the uh, this vibration at any amplitude or we can say at even at uh, the any low or higher frequencies. So, the in this lecture you see we discussed mainly about the active vibration control part in which the accelerometers which are providing the sufficient uh, uh, knowledge towards you see the vibration part and then we can suppress those things accordingly the vibration part. In the next lecture you see we are going to discuss about the you know like uh, the different kind of materials uh, which is which is being used as you see you know like the smart materials and they have active application in the vibration control part. So, again you see under the principles of vibra uh, active vibration control the smart structure have lots of applications towards that. So, till that you see we mainly discussed about the piezoelectric feature right from the basic principle to the application point of view to the accelerometers and in the next lecture now we are going to discuss about the smart structure which has uh, which have you know like direct uh, direct application right from the magnetorheological fluid to electrorheological fluid to shape memory alloy they have a direct application towards the vibration controller part. Thank you very much.